Now then, welcome to a short tutorial of the Magic Farm 3, based in version 1.1.32 of the mod pack, using Tinker's Tools with the Iguana Tweaks upgrades. Hopefully this short tutorial will help you work through the progression from Tinker's Tools from the beginning of the mod pack all the way through to the best tools you can get. We're going to deal primarily with picks and mining the ores that you will need to progress. When you mouse over blocks, the Walia at the top of the screen will show you what the effective tool is that you'll need. And when you look into other ores that you'll see around underground, you'll see the harvest level available. Now the harvest level is a new thing that was brought in by Iguana Tweaks to make it more difficult to mine certain ores. Certain ores need picks of certain quality. In vanilla, you use a stone pick to mine iron. In uh, this mod pack, you have to have a harvest level of iron in order to mine iron. Now, there are several beginning resources that you can pick up quite easily when you first start playing a mod pack. Um, wood, punching trees, uh, but in this case, wood, you cannot make a wooden pickaxe. A wooden pickaxe in the vanilla sense is irrelevant. It doesn't work. But you can make wooden tool bindings and wooden tool rods, which is basically the same as a stick anyway, and other parts and bits and pieces for tools and weapons. Uh, stone, cobblestone, makes many different things as well, but they cannot be used. You can see this in red writing there. Can only be used to make casts. Cannot be used to make a tool. So you make casts from those. That's part of Tinker's Construct itself. That's easy enough to understand if you know Tinker's Construct. Paper, easily made from sugarcane, can make paper tool rods and paper bindings. Also cactus, if you're in a desert, uh, can make cactus tool rods and cactus bindings and also cactus knife blades. The main ingredient that you want to start off with with iguana tweaks is flint. Flint pickaxe head is the most important starting point and from that you can make a flint pickaxe. A flint pickaxe it gives you the ability to mine stone so as you can see the effective tool pickaxe gives you the ability to mine stone and also auto infused stone for uh, Thorncraft. Once you've got yourself a flint pickaxe and you can mine stone and infused stone, you still see that you can't mine iron, copper, apatite or amber or any of the others. You can't mine anything else but the next level up is the harvest level iron which are these four blocks here. In order to upgrade the flint pickaxe you'll have to use it a lot of times there is an, a mining XP level so 185 uses of it before it levels up to be able to do the next level. There's a quicker way of doing it though you can add a zombie head to the pickaxe and that will automatically give it the next mining level of iron. Now my choice here my best uh, looking pickaxe is using a paper binding a bone tool rod and a flint pickaxe head and that then makes a writable flint pickaxe which has the mining level of stone but the main thing there is it has modifiers remaining one and that allows you to place a zombie head on it to upgrade it to iron. The better durability comes from the bone tool rod. The bone tool rod has a 1.08 durability modifier so whereas a wooden pick with a flint head would give you a durability of 121, a bone tool rod and a paper binding with a flint head would give you 130 durability. It's a small amount but it makes it nice and simple to keep track of. And bones and paper and flint should all be easy enough for you to get hold of. And if you want then you can level up that pick by hitting rock and stone 185 times digging out some areas or you can add a zombie head if you've been lucky enough to find one. Once you've got your flint headed pick leveled up so that you can mine harvest level iron you can get iron, copper, appetite and amber. Copper is the important one here. Once you get the copper you can make yourself a copper pickaxe. Now a copper pickaxe is basically a copper pickaxe head 
on whatever pickaxe handle and binding you had previously. All you need to do is make sure that your pickaxe is fully repaired by adding more flint to it in your crafting grid to repair it and then upgrade it by adding a copper pickaxe head. Copper pickaxe head is made using Tinker's Construct in a Tinker Smeltery as normal. And then you should be able to mine the next level, coal ore, aluminium ore and tin ore. The tin and the copper combined can make bronze. Two parts copper, one part tin or thereabouts, rough equation there, can make bronze. Before we move on to the next mining level, there are a couple of other materials you can see in this chest that could be used to create um, a starting point for your mining. Firstly, let's just take a quick look at gravel. Gravel, three gravel makes a flint. Or you could just break gravel to get one flint from every piece of gravel. That just takes a little bit longer, a little bit more grinding to turn gravel into flint. But you can just combine three in a crafting grid to make flint. Uh, the other option is if you can get into the nether. Now obsidian is a much higher harvest level than any other tools here. So there is a little trick for making a uh, nether portal before that time comes. You can pour water onto lava to make obsidian in a grid around to make a nether portal. You can light it using flint and a bit of iron to make a flint and steel and then go through and grab yourself some netherrack. Netherrack can be turned into all the different tool parts and has a mining level of stone. So you could make a netherrack pickaxe, which could be using a paper binding to make it writable, which will allow you to upgrade to the next level. It is pretty much the same as using flint, but you can use netherrack instead. And then there's plastic. Plastic requires you to melt raw plastic from Mine Factory Reloaded in a Tinker's Smeltery and then cast out the tools. The plastic pickaxe head has a very high durability, the highest durability of all the pickaxe heads that you can get at the early levels. Uh, in order to get the smeltery in the first place, you're gonna need to have done quite a bit of work, but the plastic then is a very tough material and it also has the highest mining speed. So while the flint pickaxe here has a mining speed of four and a durability of 130, the plastic pickaxe head would have a durability of 500 and a mining speed of six but you still need to level it up because you're only going to be able to do stone at the beginning the next mining levels are uh, lead ore ferrous ore and lapis ore all requiring a bronze tool bronze harvest level so you can take your copper pickaxe and you could add a skeleton skull to make it a boosted mining level of bronze and then you can mine lead ferrous and lapis uh, unfortunately none of those contribute to the next level which is redstone level for the redstone level you're gonna need to level up a copper pickaxe or a bronze pickaxe for the next level you're gonna need to level up a bronze pickaxe a bronze pickaxe leveled up will be the same as adding a creeper head to a bronze pickaxe which takes it up to the next mining level of redstone, which allows you to harvest redstone, surprise, surprise, gold, emerald, and also cinnabar. A couple of other options that are worth mentioning at this stage is that now you can do lead, you can make lead tool rods, which are heavy and reinforced, giving an extra durability modifier, uh, lead bindings, which is also adding with reinforced. You can also make a lead hammerhead, which has a high durability and makes the 3x3 mining tool, which is pretty useful at the bronze level. Uh, you can also now take the ferrous ore, which is also down as nickel, and add it with iron ore to make invar. And invar can also make a very good, reliable tool rod. It can make a pickaxe head, which is bronze mining level with a high durability and speed and all the other bits and pieces for making tools. Invar's another good stage, but it only does the bronze still. Bronze itself has a durability of 204 with a mining speed of 7.5, whereas Invar has a higher durability at 450 and a higher mining speed at 7. So it may be worth going for Invar as opposed to bronze if you feel like it. 
Bronze is copper and tin though, so you can get yourself ahead of things by making bronze earlier and get into a bronze pickaxe or whatever other tools you require. Now that you've got your tools leveled up to the max so far, you've got problems. Obsidian is harvest level silver, as is silver ore harvest level silver. You need silver harvest level in order to break obsidian and silver. Now, there are a couple of picks that I recommend here. An Electrum pick breaks obsidian and silver ore, but not quite shiny ore. And then a silver pick also breaks silver and obsidian. And once you've broken the obsidian, we move on to the next stage, which is obsidian and other pieces. But there are ways to make things outside of the norm. Uh, occasionally, mobs will drop chain metal items. Leggings, chain boots, chests, helmets. These can be melted down in a smeltery to make steel. And steel will conquer the obsidian and silver problem. You can also put steel with plastic from Mine Factory Reloaded to create a plastic steel, which has a very high durability, good mining speed, and mining level silver as well. Uh, one of my tricks that I've recently done in my single player, the Druid's Tail, is get silver nuggets from killing silverfish out in the mines and combine six nuggets or nine nuggets with a gold ore or a gold ingot to make it an electrum ingot or a couple of electrum ingots and that also makes us a decent pickaxe head which can mine obsidian level with a huge mining speed of 19 but only a small durability of 290 as opposed to the plaster steel of 90 durability, uh, 900 durability. The silver pick itself, once you can mine silver, has a durability of only 80, but a high mining speed of 18. Not bad, not bad. Then you could mine the obsidian and you can make an obsidian pick. And an obsidian pick is heavy reinforced, has 71 durability and a mining speed of 6.5. Once you're able to take obsidian, then the quickest route is to take the obsidian, melt it down in a smeltery with some iron and some aluminium to make alumite. Alumite is able to level up to take the nether ores. Once you've got yourself an alumite, uh, alumite pick, you can mine diamond ore, which of course can add durability and Diamonds are important, everybody loves a few diamonds. And then that's all the vanilla ores covered. You can mine all the vanilla ores just by getting to the obsidian level over there. Uh, once you've leveled this pick up, and I believe you can add things like a blaze head, you can then go into mining ardite ore and make an ardite pick. And an ardite pick can mine more ardite ore which has an effective durability of 606 and a mining speed of 9. Not too bad. Once you've leveled that up, you should be able to then take Cobalt and take a Cobalt pick. A Cobalt pick is heavy reinforced, has 740 durability and a mining speed of 21. Not bad, not bad at all. But it doesn't stop there. There is one final section that you can look at. Combining Ardite and Cobalt Ore allows you to make Manioleum, which has very good tool parts, including the Manioleum Pickaxe, which has a Cobalt level of mining. Don't forget, however, when you're mining in the Nether, these Nether Ores will be exploding as you mine them. So it is recommended that you get yourself a sil silky jewel from Tinker's Construct and add it to a pickaxe so that you have a silk touch pickaxe because these ores do not break with a silk touch pickaxe and therefore they do not explode and leave you feeling sorry for yourself. Iguana Tweaks for Tinker's Tools makes Tinker's Tools level up and the progression is an interesting part of the game. In Magic Farm 3, Jaded Cat has refined the tools and the iguana tweaks to have some other little interesting features as well. Like the plastic steel, there is also tear jerkers, onions. 
There's also Britannia metals and Thorncraft metals. What I have shown you today in this tutorial is a very simple progression. I hasten to add that there are plenty of other things that you may want to include and explore and tinker with. It is called Tinker's Construct because you tinker with the tools to get the best tool for the job for you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you maybe in my single player series, A Druid's Tale, Let's Play A Magic Farm 3, and around and about in other tutorials. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.